Claire, I'll come back to some questions. Claire, Claire, how's your um, initial take? Yes, I, mean, I think I would have a slightly different take on the original purpose. If we go back to 2001, immediately after the tragedy of 9-11, and I had the uh, responsibility and, and privilege of serving on the UN team that negotiated the Bonn Agreement, <coughs> Um, the original setup was actually a global consensus rooted in a UN mandate. So it wasn't this division between the West and the East, but it was a global consensus to support the Afghan people establish a legitimate government, recognizing that a lot of the trouble in the 90s of both the civil war between the Afghan factions that had come out of the Mujahideen groups and then the coming of the Taliban was because the basic good governance in the country wasn't established. And so the agreement that Lakdar Brahimi, the UN facilitator, put together was this attempt to put together, or have the Afghans themselves put together, the basic building blocks of a legitimate government. And I would argue that it, it wasn't perfect, but by and large it went relatively smoothly, such by that by 2005, um, many powers who were backing the agreement said it's time to go home now. There hadn't been a single suicide bomb, there'd been a handful of very tragic deaths, but by and large the country was stable. And the population rallied to this. I travelled to Kandahar dressed pretty much as I am, uh, with a scarf over my head. I could travel freely around the country. It was relatively safe and secure, and it was safe and secure for Afghans. And I think it was really because the UN had partnered with the Afghan people in this project. Across the country, I would talk, Afghans would say, what we want more than anything is ordinary, an ordinary life. We want law, order, justice. We really want an accountable civil service. They recognized that this was, this was missing. So I don't see it as a Western imposition of democracy. Maybe that was part of the Bush rhetoric. But the UN mission was very much, how do you have the basic governance for Afghans? And part of it was just not, not trying to be too ambitious. Um, the Bonn Agreement had there were sort of two things a year. Year one was set up the, the Afghan National Army and get block grants to villages. There are now block grants going to 23,000 villages across the country, and they all have their own village councils. Year two was a rudimentary health system, um, and so on. And it was, it was very step by step, um, and very much building on letting Afghans run it for themselves. So the UN came along and said, you need 15,000 euro bureaucrats to change your currency. And the Afghan cabinet said, no, we don't. They went down to the money market, talked to Hawala dealers. They said, we'll do it. And they did it in three months. Um, so it was very much all about Afghan solutions and not bringing in civilians. Um, what went wrong, I think, two major things. One is the failure of key powers um, to understand what it takes to do, not big nation building, but basic, how do you set up a government? Such that they tip billions of dollars into UN agencies and NGOs, some of which did very good work but forgot, for example, to put money so that you could pay the police and pay the <coughs> army. I was paying policemen out of my salary because there wasn't enough in the budget. Um, so really elementary mistakes about really what, what, what does, what's the role of the state, what does the government do, and the importance of just paying salaries and getting basic goods and services going. And then the second mistake was to think that security could be won by paying off warlords. And actually paying off those warlords were exactly what terrorised the population and sent them rushing back into the arms of the Taliban. Mm -hmm. um, so these two fundamental mistakes. My colleagues and I from, from the government came actually to, to London and to Washington in 2005 with a memo saying, look, unless we have these... At that time we thought it would have cost $200 million into the Afghan government's budget. Came with a memo saying $200 million, otherwise the country will go back to the Taliban. Um, the response at the time was, we don't believe you, it's all completely stable. It wasn't because we were clever, it was just because we were there. Um, now, moving forwards, why do we continue to read it wrong? I think these myths of Afghanistan persist. One is that it's a country full of warlords. I believe the culture of warlordism was something that was created predominantly in the 1980s. And warlordism is something very different from tribal culture. Tribal culture has deep respect for a type of rule of law and justice and fairness. Warlordism is something that a lot of the tribes um, can't stand. We see the country as very poor, the people are very poor, but it's a potentially very wealthy country. Um, and we're seeing the country as ungovernable. I still think the Afghan population are really thirsting and, and hungering for, for basic good governance. So I think we continue to misread it, but I'm hopeful that the ingredients are there to get it right in future.